your child's diagnosed with autism, you kind of leave their feeling extremely overwhelmed, exhausted, disappointed, scared. There was nobody to turn to of how to navigate this new world for us. I was teaching full time when I had Mackenzie, who's our oldest, and then we had Finn, who's our second. And it was around that time that Mackenzie started to show some things that I noticed as a teacher developmentally that weren't checking out. She just liked doing everything on her own, really independent. And then it was more obvious as two years came around, like the language didn't come and she wasn't responding to her name, which is hard when you're a parent and you're just kind of looking for answers of, is this just my kid or is there something else going on? She was diagnosed just before her second birthday with autism spectrum. With autism, they just say, your child has autism you should get some intervention. Now go figure it out. For us, Mackenzie was the first person we knew with autism. When I was growing up, kids weren't diagnosed with autism. I didn't have autistic kids in my class. So I started researching and NEC was one of the organizations. My mom has an essay that I wrote when I was in second grade. And it was about, I, I just wanted to help people. And I think that has held true throughout my life. That's the story of a lot of people at NECC. They care about the students with autism. They care about providing the absolute best services that they can. We're committed to not letting autism be a barrier to an individual achieving the very highest quality of life that they possibly can. From the person I reached out to from intake to the evaluator to seeing the facilities, seeing kids run through the building that were older than Mackenzie, I just felt an enormous sense of relief. These people get it. They're going to help us navigate this. Every morning at 7.30, there was an ABA therapist in our house working with her 30 hours a week. 18 months later, Finn was diagnosed and the cycle just started again and we continued with home-based therapy. How about this one? Me. Three. How about this Finn. one? Can you say mama? Oh, mama. Can you say dada? Dada. Finn got 18 months, whereas Mackenzie only got a year with home base. He had more language skills than her, so he made a lot of strides. A few years later, we had Graham. I reached out to Dr. Becky McDonald. I knew about the infant study, and I want our third child into this. There's a big question in the field is how early can you diagnose children with autism? And the average age of diagnosis in the United States is four. In 2014, we published a study looking at treatment outcomes for children with autism. And what we found was that if you can start to diagnose and treat them at one years old, they have better outcomes than if you start treating them later. But our infant study is different. We're looking for symptoms even earlier, like at below six months. Can we identify some of those symptoms? And if we treat them, can we then change the trajectory for that child so that they never end up with a diagnosis of autism? Graham was born and Dr. Becky said, I'm gonna come out the first week. And I thought to myself, what can a one week old baby tell you about autism? And she said so much. Hey, Graham, Graham. So we're looking for that typical development. So we assess in babies who are four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks old. Some of them include things like eye contact. Newborn babies will look at you for a prolonged period of time, like 10 seconds. Responding to voice is something else. So if you have a baby and you hold them up and somebody calls their name or just talks to them, they're likely to turn their head toward that voice. Reciprocal vocalizations. So a baby makes a sound, you make the sound back. The baby will make it again make the sound back again, and there's this kind of conversation that happens. If we don't see those typical behaviors, then we get in there and we coach the parents on how to get that skill to appear. And if they haven't learned the skill, then we coach the parents again and we come back the next week until they've acquired the skill. When she would come out, she had the standardized tests that she was doing with him, and then by the time we got to I think a year. It was some of the tests that early intervention had done with Finn and Ken's at the time. 
And now seeing Graham do it and watching him participate and babble and make noise and watch people and imitate things, it was so eye-opening. I just kept looking at Becky being like, what's gonna happen? And she's like, nothing's happening. He's just growing up. He's just a typical boy who's growing up and making strides. And it doesn't mean he was advanced or behind. He's just doing his thing. And so it was so reassuring to me and Mark. Um, we have identified a few kids who have those very early symptoms and we have done parent coaching and we've worked with them. Some of them have ended up with a diagnosis of autism at 12 months, but then they have lost that diagnosis by 24 months. So my hope is that it goes beyond a research project and becomes a protocol that's used by pediatricians. We're talking about infants that are just a few months old that are getting world-class cutting edge services very, very early in their lives. There's still a couple years worth of, of the study to complete, but very much hoping that that study can be used to inform clinicians and that the assessment methodology that Dr. McDonald and her colleagues have worked on is something that could be made more widely available. Leading this organization allows an opportunity to really impact the lives of thousands, maybe millions, of individuals impacted by autism. Now we have Mackenzie and Finn, who are on the autism spectrum, and then we have Graham, who is a typically developing four-year-old boy. We were never people that dwelled on like the diagnoses. We were just like, this is who our kids are. All we ever wanted to do was to always progress at whatever pace they wanted to go at. From what I know about Becky's study, when they do find those indicators and they start intervention early, imagine if you were able to pick up on some of those deficits, you know, at six months, like what the child could do or where they would end up. So I think the study's super important and I hope it changes autism for everybody.